Okay, in this tutorial I'm going to talk about um, NAT and issues uh, related to network address translation for the Cisco CCNA, for studying for your Cisco CCNA. And so what we're going to learn to do, and I'm going to show you how to do this, is to set up a network in Packet Tracer, and then you can set up NAT, and we're going to set up a static NAT translation, one-to-one -one translation from the router to the server here, right, so that this uh, address is translated to this public address, so static NAT translation. And then over here on this network, over here we'll set up a uh, NAT overload so that all of the clients on this network are translated to this one IP address over here. And before I show you how to set this up, and we'll do it step by step all the way from the beginning, so it might take a couple of tutorials. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about how NAT functions. So I'm going to switch over here to this diagram. And in this diagram, We've got, um, we've got three networks. We have a network over here, network in the middle, and a network over here. Now these three networks are separated by two routers. So there's the router, this is a router here, this is a router here. And you notice that this is the 202.0.5.0 network. This is a public, uh, publicly available uh, network address. And this is also another public address space, 180.4.0.0. And this is another publicly available IP address space. So what I mean by publicly available is that these are not private addresses. Private addresses would be 10.0.0.0, 172.16.0.0, and 192.168.0.0. But these are publicly available IP addresses, right? So in this scenario, you've got... Um, this computer over here, which ends up being 40.2.0.100, let's say, so he's host 100, right? And then on in between these two routers, this interface right here on this router would be, let's say, 180.4.0.2, and then this one would be 180.4.0.1. And so in this situation, the problem with this situation is that um, you're routing between three networks, but everybody on these networks needs a public IP address, right? A public IP address. And as we know, um, the world is moving towards IP version 6. All the IP version 4 addresses have been now handed out. And so this is kind of a, a thing of the past. Um, and But there was a time in which, you know, if you, if you were going to be on the Internet, you needed a public IP address, right? And um, so... With NAT, right, with network address translation, what we can do is we can save IP addresses. We can save publicly available IP addresses by addressing our network, our local area network, our LAN, let's say our business. Instead of using pri uh, public IP addresses for every computer on our business, we use a private address. So I'm going to show you really quickly what I mean. So let's say this is our business over here. This is our router, and so what we could do is to say, well, instead of having everybody have a public IP address, we put everybody on a 192.168. Let's say 1.0 network, right? So now everybody will be on the 192.168.1.0 network, and similarly, this client now would then change from this address, right, to. this address right so now let me uh, pull that into position here all right so now this person is the 192.168.1.100 um, computer and he's part of the 192.168.1.0 networks he's a private network so now if we have private addressing over here we can put NAT on this router right here. We can install NAT or configure NAT on this router right here. So I'm just going to put the word NAT here, Network Address Translation, so that this router can translate all of these private IP addresses to this one public IP address, 180.4.0.20. And what that does is it basically, well, one thing, it hides all of these clients, all of these hosts, behind the router and it translates these private addresses to this one public address and what that does is that means when these computers um, communicate let's say over the web or on the internet that everybody else in the other networks let's say will all know 
of these computers as just this one address, right? So you'll be uh, web servers will be sending web pages to this one address right here, but really it's going to these multiple clients, right? And so everybody here gets translated to let's say this one address, and that's an example of network address translation. Now this is more typical. This is the type of scenario you'd see like in a home network. So on a home network what you'd see is we've got our let's say our Linksys wireless router or our Belkin router or whatever we have our wireless device um, Netgear you know there's all kinds D-Link right so let's say this is our wireless router or maybe we got it from our our ISP from Quest or from whoever right and there's our modem and this is the cloud this is the internet right and so this is our private network so we've got two computers hooked up to our router and we've got a laptop at home and so this is our private network right so this would be 192.168.0.100.101.102 this is called the inside local addresses right here the inside local area this is also the private area right and then this address on the WAN port of our wireless router would be the inside global address so inside local is our private addresses inside global is our public address and then across the internet whoever we're trying to communicate with if we're trying to get a web page we're going to be trying to get a web page from the outside global public IP address of someone on the other side of the internet and then we will never know what their outside local address might be so there's outside global and outside local but we're not going to know what the outside local is because it's probably hidden behind NAT right so it's probably NATed just like we would be NATed to this one address right here so inside local inside global to the outside global to the outside local so why is NAT important and why do we have to learn about NAT? Well NAT 1 adds a layer of security by hiding our LAN or our local area network uh, computer addresses from the world by translating everything to one public IP address so it acts as a way of hiding the computers behind the router firewall but also um, uh, NAT played a part in this helping to conserve IP version 4 addresses uh, public addresses right and help to conserve public addresses because we had private addressing which was um, brought about which we could use private addresses on our local area networks in conjunction with network address translation or translations here network at NAT and um, these two things private addressing these private address ranges and NAT helped to conserve IP version 4 addresses and allowed it to continue this long. So NAT is useful in a bunch of different ways. And so now we're going to configure NAT, we're going to set this network up in Packet Tracer and set it up step by step.